a unique snake. The rosy boa is both inquisitive, yet also a bit shy. While the rosy does enjoy human contact, they can become a bit overwhelmed if they are not cared for properly. Regarded as one of the slowest moving snakes in the world, the rosy requires several hiding areas within its enclosure. This is needed in order to mimic its place in nature. Because the rosy is slow moving, it needs shelter to hide from predators. The rosy also requires a dry and arid climate with low humidity. This particular snake is often at its healthiest when allowed to brumate between the months of December and March. Now that we've addressed some of the basics, let's get down to business. Please enjoy this guide to rosy boa care for beginners. Feel free to pause the video at random times to take notes or simply rewatch a section at your leisure. The rosy is a low maintenance and high reward snake. They are very responsive, which is good if positive engagement is what you are seeking. Some of the pros of owning the rosy boa are as follows. Small size, the rosy is between 17 and 36 inches in length on average. They are ground dwellers, meaning they don't require a tall enclosure. This can potentially save you a hefty amount of money. The rosy, although a bit curious, is fairly calm in general. This means they can be easily handled. The rosy is, of course, non-venomous, which is the backbone of a beginner pet snake. The rosy is affordable. Although prices will vary based on subspecies and morphs, there is a rosy for every budget. The rosy is a gorgeous snake. If appearance is one of the most important things on your list, the rosy boa is high quality. Rosy boas do not require a complex and varied diet. This can be good for your wallet in the long run. And finally, the rosy boa does not excrete as much as other snakes. This means a much cleaner enclosure and less overall maintenance for you. Transitioning to the negatives, the rosy has a known trio. However, it's all subjective. The pros far outweigh the cons in grand fashion. However, some issues can include life itself. The rosy boa can live for a very long time. The average age for a rosy in captivity is between 20 and 30 years. While this is a beautiful positive for the snake itself and a responsible owner, this long lifespan should be considered before purchase. Are you personally up for the task and the responsibility required for extended care? This is only a con if the answer is no. Next, nipping the hand that feeds. Occasionally, the rosy will mistake your hand for a snack. Rosy boas have a strong feeding response, so be careful and avoid making quick hand motions when you pick them up. And finally, climate control. As briefly noted earlier, some subspecies require a low humidity and arid climate. Mimicking the conditions within the enclosure is critical. However, this is only a negative if you're not up for the task and fail to regulate the temperature. This issue will likely become a non-issue once you know what you're doing. When a rosy boa is in the wild, it will hunt various birds and small animals, such as baby rabbits and mice, and the occasional small reptile. While this can include snakes from time to time, this is certainly an exception. However, it's a good idea to keep your very own pet rosy in its own enclosure. Snakes can become overly stressed if they are housed together and can unfortunately resort to cannibalism in some cases. In order to avoid a host of potential issues, Keep your rosy isolated from other snakes. For beginners, this is quite possibly the most important question you'll ever pose. How much does a rosy boa cost? While the baseline prices usually run about $50, you will have to pay more if you want a rosy from a particular locality. Because breeders have to spend more time and more money finding the proper snakes to breed, the final offspring will go for higher prices, typically between $75 and $100. Complex morphs, such as an albino or snow rosy boa, can go for several thousand dollars. As a note, it's important to understand that the cost of a snake is not the cost of ownership. 
For more information, we encourage you to consult a friend or family member who currently owns a snake or simply contact a local pet store that carries exotic animals. They will supply you with all you need to know concerning basic care for your snake in terms of the cost of enclosures, the cost of snake hides, bedding, lighting, etc. You can also find that information on our site at snakesforpets.com. The shed rate of a rosy depends on three core factors, age, feeding, and humidity. During the first few months of life, a rosy may shed once per week. As it ages, that gap will increase. One shed per every 30 to 60 days. Adult rosy boas over the age of four will shed only once every three to six months on average. Transitioning to feeding, if your rosy is well fed, it will be more likely to shed with the alignment of the aforementioned time frames. However, if your snake is not shedding, this could be a sign that your rosy is not receiving enough food. And finally, core factor number three, humidity. Snakes require a certain level of humidity in order to shed effectively. Your rosy will need the proper amount of humidity or shedding will become uncomfortable. If your snake is eating properly yet still failing to shed accordingly, the humidity level within your rosy's enclosure could be inadequate. Setting up your rosy boa's enclosure will take a bit of time and it will also take a bit of money. Not to worry, this process is far more simplistic than it seems. In many respects, setting up your rosy's enclosure will be the most difficult part of ownership. This is, after all, your snake's home. However, if done properly, you will not have to worry about your snake's welfare on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's briefly cover the high points of concern in a step-by-step -step manner. Enclosure size. The most important thing to note when purchasing an enclosure is interior space. Your rosy will need enough room to stretch out. As a general rule, the perimeter of the tank should be double that of the length of the snake. Because most rosies are 17 to 36 inches by the time they are four years old, play the numbers game before making a final purchase. The last thing you want is for your snake to outgrow its enclosure. This will eventually mean new housing for your rosy and additional cost for you. In terms of what type of enclosure you select, your main options, as with all snakes and other reptiles, will be glass, plastic, or wood. While you are certainly free to choose, safety and security are the primary concerns. Lockable lids are also critical. One of the notable characteristics of the rosy is the act of rubbing their snout on lids and walls. They can become so persistent in this act that they can sustain injury. This is yet another reason as to why a secure enclosure is so very important. Transitioning to the topic of humidity, rosy boas do not require as much humidity compared to that of other snakes. This is due to the fact that rosies are native to desert environments with naturally low humidity levels. In terms of care for your rosy's enclosure, humidity levels between 20 and 60% on average are ideal. With the use of a hygrometer, you can accurately measure humidity levels in real time. This is critical, especially if levels increase to an unhealthy range. Hygrometers are fairly inexpensive and can be purchased online or at your local pet store. When it comes to the proper substrate or bedding, Rosy boas need material that will allow them to move freely. This is why aspen shaving and newspaper are the most ideal selections. Additionally, these particular bedding options do not retain too much moisture, thus helping to keep humidity levels under control. The addition of a humid hide box is also important. Line the box with substrate that retains moisture. Options such as cypress mulch and coconut husk are two very fine selections. Pivoting briefly to the topic of hydration, your rosy boa's enclosure should include a small and shallow drinking bowl that is not large enough for your snake to soak in and is also too heavy to tip over. Place your rosy's water on the cool side of the enclosure. 
By measuring humidity levels regularly, you should be able to find an area that contains an ambient humidity level of 25 to 30%. Other hydration options include limiting access to water by leaving only one bowl inside of the enclosure for an hour per day. Another option involves relocating your Rosie to a different enclosure to drink water once per day. All of these measures are in play in an effort to keep humidity levels under control as prolonged water will introduce a significant change in humidity percentages. Moving on to the topic of heating and lighting, rosy boas often function quite well without the means of additional lighting. If they are housed in a room with quality natural light, that should be more than enough. Consider this money saved. While rosies do not require a lot of light, heat, on the other hand, is critical. A rosie's enclosure, as is the case with any snake, must provide a variety of temperatures, so heating up and cooling down will not be an issue. On average, the rosie is comfortable between 72 and 85 degrees. This degree gap is important as it plays to the time of day, the season, and general preference. The best way to provide heat transitions is through the means of a heat pad under one-third of the enclosure. The hottest area should approach 90, while 70 should be the goal for the cooler end. Using a sensitive thermometer is essential when it comes to setting up just the right temperature environment. It should also be noted that heat pads can be turned down or completely off at night. This can enable your Rosie to reside in an environment that somewhat mimics that of a natural and wild environment. It's always cooler at night, so your snake's enclosure should be no different. Shifting now to the topic of cleaning, more specifically, the key ways to clean your rosy boa's enclosure. Generally speaking, the process is quite simple, and I will now take you through the steps. Complete these tasks every four to six weeks for the best effectiveness. Step one, dispose all substrate. Do not try to reuse substrate, even if it appears to be clean. Step two, wash the tank fully and all furniture, hides, decorations, etc. with hot and soapy water. Step 3. Apply a scent-free disinfectant to those items once they have fully dried. Step 4. If by chance those items cannot be cleaned properly or sanitized, it is wise to discard them. Step 5. Wait for the tank itself and all items inside, such as hides, decorations, to be fully dried before inserting them back into your Rosie's enclosure. Humidity control is the key. Moisture wet items can serve as a negative to your snake's environment. Make sure that everything is dry. And finally, saving this item for last, but it's truly the backbone for the aforementioned instructions, complete all of these tasks by wearing protective gloves while also using cleaning products that are specifically reserved for snake care. This is the foundation of proper cleaning. In addition to proper cleaning, another critical aspect of your rosy boa's overall health is diet. For the most vital reasons, what you feed your snake and when is critical to positive living. Pinky or fuzzy mice are the most ideal for a young rosy. As your snake becomes an adult, it should feed on adult mice or fuzzy rats. These can be purchased online or from a local pet store. As an important word of note, these meals should be defrosted before being placed before your rosy. As it relates to mealtime management, the feeding schedule will depend on age. A baby rosy, ages 0 to 1, should be fed a single pinky mouse once every three days. At age 2, your rosy should be fed two pinky or fuzzy mice once every four days. Young adult snakes, which falls under the ages of 2 to 4, should be served two large fuzzy mice or pinky rats once every five days, ages four through seven, which defines adult status, your rosy should be served two adult mice or fuzzy rats once every five days. And finally, a mature adult rosy of seven years or older should be fed three large adult mice or two rats once every six to seven days. Because rosies can grow at very different rates, it's important to contact your vet if you have any questions. There are always exceptions to standard feeding guidelines.
The final section of our Rosie Boa Care Guide video involves proper handling. Having a snake is wonderful. Watching it roam around within its enclosure is most always a real treat. However, the ability to hold your snake with confidence is one of the primary objectives of any snake owner, especially a beginner who simply wants a non-venomous snake that can be enjoyed without significant concern. As it relates to the Rosie Boa, there are several steps to follow that can and will serve you well. Number one, introduce your scent. This is important because your scent will help your Rosie to develop a sense of familiarity. After two or three days of your scent taking center stage, your Rosie will feel more confident with you. Number two, wash your hands. More or less piggybacking on the previous tip, washing your hands can secure your scent. The last thing you want is for your snake to pick up the smell of food, for example, and mistake your hand for something else. Also, go easy on scented soaps and lotions. Keep your hands clean, but also keep them smelling familiar to your Rosie. Number three, relax. If you're nervous about handling your Rosie, especially for the first time, your hand movements can be a bit shaky and swooping in nature. Simply stay calm. Move your hands toward your snake in a sideways motion when picking up your boa. Be confident, yet relaxed. No sudden or random movements. As a word of caution, never pick up a snake if it appears stressed. If it's tightly curled and or hissing, leave them alone. Shedding, bromating, recent meal consumption, and new enclosure arrival are all reasons to leave your rosy boa alone. When you do pick up your snake, come at your rosy from straight on. Never sneak up behind your snake. Pick up your boa from the middle using your other hand to support its back. Number four, let them roam. While the rosy needs some level of support to promote confidence when being held, it's okay to let your snake explore. Never squeeze or attempt to restrain movement. Allow your rosy to move freely in between your fingers and hands. Let your snake dictate the pace. This is very important, especially for future engagement. Number five, never touch the head of your snake. While it's only human nature to want to explore your snake and admire all of its traits, leave the head alone. Touching your snake's head can serve as an act of intimidation. This can create stress and potentially cause aggression in your Rosie, thus placing you on the bad end of things. Keep the peace and avoid touching your snake's head. Number six, do not place your snake around your neck. While images and video of a snake wrapped around the necks of happy reptile lovers is all the rage, your rosy boa must never come near your neck, let alone be allowed to wrap itself around your neck. It's always a bad idea to place any type of constrictor snake around your neck or the neck of others. Let your rosy explore your hands and forearms, but draw the line at your elbows. Keep the action in front of you. It's safer for everyone involved. And finally, number seven, the slower, the better. Take everything as it comes and do so at a slow pace. Your rosy will need time to get used to its new environment and time to get used to you. Your snake will also need time to get used to you handling them. This is why it's vital to avoid holding your rosy for a long period of time straight out of the gate. Hold your rosy for a couple of minutes at a time and then slowly work your way up. This will build a level of trust and confidence, both for you and for your snake. Just like any new pet, trust is critical. You'll always be able to do more things and have more fun, but trusting bond has been established. If your Rosie happens to bite you, it's important that you immediately stop moving. Rosie boas will release their prey when it stops moving. So, if you stop, the Rosie will likely release. Stay as cool and as calm as possible. If your Rosie does not release, apply gentle pressure to its head in a forward motion until it does release. Although it's quite rare for a Rosie to bite, accidents can happen. They usually occur when the snake mistakes your hand for a meal. Some ways to protect yourself can include using a snake hook to lift your Rosie from its enclosure, tap your snake on the back with forceps, to let your Rosie know that it's not a feeding session, but rather a handling session. And finally, one method of quote-unquote bite control involves feeding your snake in a different enclosure. 
This can help your Rosie learn that food is associated with a different location rather than simply something being lowered into its existing living space. And on that note, that will conclude things for this crash course guide on how to care for your Rosie Boa. We hope you found this video very positive and very helpful. If you would like to see more content of this nature, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Whether you're currently watching us from snakesforpets.com or directly on our main YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with our latest content. We produce fresh material on a routine basis. Question time. Do you own a rosy boa? Are you looking to own a rosy boa? If yes is the answer to either question, please leave any questions, concerns, or general comments in the comments section below. If you own a rosy, how long have you had your pet? Has everything been smooth sailing or have you encountered some difficulties? Please share your experience. What you have to offer can be of great help and benefit to those who are interested in owning a rosy of their very own. Until we meet again, we thank you so much for watching. We wish you all the best, and we hope you have a wonderful day.